powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Riesinger. Tonight, ExxonMobil and 140 union members have officially accepted a new contract deal. A last best and final offer did that trick as United Steel worker members at the Billings Refinery voted yes to a new three-year contract. Well, the workers voted on that new deal today after a tentative agreement was reached over the weekend. The two sides have been negotiating for more than a month after workers rejected the offer. Exxon made some key revisions in this latest agreement, which which the company called its best and final offer. Those include grandfathering pay rates for senior operators, clarifying timing of changing shift teams, and adding language to discuss situations where employees could lose pay because they're not allowed to bid for higher paying posts. The company officials tell us the contract will be finalized in coming days. Tonight, ExxonMobil Public Affairs Manager Dan Carter tells Q2 that the negotiations process can sometimes take extra time at work, but the company and union bargained in good faith and reached an agreement that is an important step forward. In other news tonight, Westmoreland Coal Company now has the green light to sell its assets, including the mine that feeds the coal strip power plants. Now, this is all part of the company's Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings. The company expects to complete transactions associated with its financial restructuring by the end of March, which marks the end of the first quarter. However, this isn't necessarily a dark spot for Coal Strip because the new owners of the Rosebud Mine say they will continue to sell to Coal Strip till 2019. Now, Westmoreland Coal first filed for bankruptcy back in October of 2018. The constant cold not bringing a break to firefighters battling flames on the south side of Billings tonight. But crews taking on fire and the outdoor elements like champs. They knocked down the blaze in this outbuilding on Washington Street near the intersection of State Avenue within 20 minutes. The Billings Fire Department says the cost of the damage is approximately $60,000. That fire was caused by combustible materials being placed too closely to a wood stove. Well, turning to weather, Bob, it's still chilly tonight, but the weekend was much more rough. Yes, it was, but it's going to look better next weekend. But let Good. me show you what's going to happen tonight. We go back to this morning. These were our reported record low temperatures for the day as we started the day, but then it got even colder. And let me show you these are our reported overnight lows and all those one with the little blue stars those are all brand new records across montana kalispell great falls helena uh, also butte bozeman dillon uh, livingston all with new record lows uh, billings and sheridan they tied with the record lows the one in sheridan was set in 1923 the one for billings that old record was 1989 and as you can see we're looking at some pretty cold temperatures tonight going back down to four below zero in the billings area so this will be the last chance we see some really cold temperatures but it does improve from here we'll talk about that in a few more minutes all right, thank you, Bob. Well, Billing City Council gets a trash update tonight as the city moves from alley to more curbside containers. Dave Mumford, the public, uh, Billings Public Works Director, told council members crews will replace around 300 large alley trash cans with smaller curbside trash cans. The city will be keeping about 1,000 of the large garbage bins, though, to service multifamily and commercial areas. Ultimately, Mumford says the change is for safety to help with some operational issues and will help save money. Public Works will send a letter to affected residents four weeks before making the change in their neighborhood. And the Billings Airport is now offering something to make your wait to take to the skies a little better and comes in the form of free Wi-Fi. Well, today the airport announced wireless service will be available for free throughout the entire airport. Previously, patrons had to buy passes to access the Wi-Fi. There are, those are still available if travelers want even faster Internet. <laughs> It seems Bozeman is back to the drawing board when it comes to the name of its second high school. This after blowback from the community over the name West Slope High. After a long discussion during a special meeting this afternoon, the board decided to send it back to the naming committee. The committee will now pull two more names from a list of 19 to add to the three original finalists. Those five names will then be pulled by students, parents, staff, and community members. The school board will consider those results when deciding the final name later this month. More and more former Montana foster kids are heading off to college. Each year, about 60 young adults age out of the foster care system across the state. Now, to help with that transition, the Education and Training Voucher Program provides resources to aid with that education. Now, this year, the state saw a 70% increase in the number of enrolled students, with many pursuing bachelor's degrees and post-secondary education. Gabrielle Wheeler is one of them. I feel blessed, honestly. I know 
the idea of foster care, especially while you're in it, is kind of traumatic and or exhausting, to be honest. It helped me see that I can further myself than what my biological parents did or what my experience um, was in foster care. Now, Wheeler is pursuing a degree in social work. She hopes to one day help others who are in a similar situation. An EF4 tornado ripped through Beauregard, Alabama yesterday, leaving just a few houses standing and lives in ruin. At least 200, or 23 lives taken in that rampage as winds reach speeds of 170 miles per hour and the tornado scar a mile wide and 24 miles long. The community of 10,000 had little warning. They only had about 10 minutes to find shelter. Now a community must pick up the pieces without the 23 people, including children who did not survive. President Trump says he will cooperate after the House Judiciary Committee sent letters to the White House and 80 other people and organizations. It's the latest ramp up in investigations from Democrat-led House committees. Nicole Killian is at the White House with details. During a White House event with the North Dakota State football team, President Trump blamed politics for the House Judiciary Committee's sweeping new investigation. I cooperate all the time with everybody. It's a political hoax. There's no collusion. Monday, House Judiciary Chairman Gerald Nadler said his committee sent letters to 81 people and entities, including the White House, requesting documents to investigate possible obstruction of justice, corruption, and abuse of power. The committee's Republican ranking member Member Doug Collins accused Democrats of jumping to conclusions. After recklessly prejudging the president for obstruction, Chairman Nadler is pursuing evidence to back up his conclusion because, as he admits, we don't have the facts yet. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi defended the committee's move at an event in Texas. Our founders, in their wisdom, had a separation of powers. To do anything less would be delinquent in our duties. Officials in the White House Counsel's Office say they have received the letter from the committee and are going through the request right now in an effort to accommodate as much as they can. The ramp up from the Judiciary Committee comes as other Democratic-led House committees are pursuing investigations into President Trump. The chairman of the House Intelligence, Foreign Affairs and Oversight Committees have sent letters to the White House and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo requesting documents related to the president's conversations with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now, president Trump's former personal attorney Michael Cohen will be back on Capitol Hill this week for a second day of closed-door testimony with the House Intelligence Committee. Next week, that same committee will hold a public hearing with former Trump associate Felix Sater regarding talks on a possible Moscow Trump Tower. Governors from across the nation are meeting this week in Iowa. And Montana Governor Steve Bullock is getting a lot of attention. Bullock is chair of the National Governors Association, but that is not the only reason he's in the spotlight. There's a lot of speculation Bullock might make a run for president. The Des Moines Register reports that Bullock downplayed talk of any potential run, saying his focus is back home for now on the legislative session in Montana. Bullock will be meeting with Iowa Democrats while he's there, according to the paper. One person we now know will not enter the already crowded Democratic presidential race, Hillary Clinton. CNN reporting that the 2016 Democratic presidential nominee has ruled out a 2020 run. Make America Great Again, the slogan that helped Donald Trump capture the White House. Catchy political slogans are nothing new to the American political scene, as the perfect political slogan can mean the difference between victory and defeat at the ballot box. Well, tonight, Jay Cohn brings us an intriguing story from Montana's political past. How a catchphrase from the 1968 Montana governor's race stopped a statewide sales tax in its tracks. Most Montanans know that we don't have a state sales tax, but few know why. For more than half a century, the state legislature has flirted with the idea of a general sales tax. In fact, twice it was put on the ballot for a vote of the people, and twice it was soundly rejected. That outcome so decisive that even to this very day, the idea of a general sales tax is pretty much dead on arrival in Montana. 83-year-old Jim Graff has been at the heart of many ad campaigns over the years. His marketing career has included stints with the Billings Gazette and most recently Campgrounds of America. Back in 1968, Graff was working at Sage Advertising in Helena when he suddenly found himself talking with Democratic Attorney General Forrest Anderson. He says, well, I've made my mind up. I'm going to run for governor. And I said, well, uh... 
we'd like to help you out and uh, make it happen. We played up the fact that he was a good looking guy. He was, he looked like a, up close, he looked like a movie star. Still though, Anderson found himself the underdog in the race against incumbent Governor Tim Babcock. Just a few months earlier, faced with a looming budget shortfall, Babcock had proposed that the legislature enact a 2% general sales tax. And although that sales tax bill failed, the topic remained the hot issue of the day. Anderson wanted to make it clear to voters where he stood. Leadership to develop state revenues from the present tax structure through increased economic growth. We need less state government and a better administration for the uh, taxpayer dollar. Anderson's campaign also needed a catchy slogan. Babcock was using win with Tim, and Graff knew he had his work cut out for him. It just came right out of my head, but here it was right in front of me, four words, pay more what for. It definitely had all the makings of a great campaign slogan, short, sweet, to the point, and it rhymed. While our taxes soar, we ask pay more what for. It hits at the heart of Tim's campaign. I knew that we had a winner, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not a, a salesman by many, any aspects, and uh, I wasn't sure that uh, I could sell that to, to Forrest. But he says, Jimmy, he says, uh, you do what you, you and Bob think need to be done to win, for me to win this thing. And if you think you've got a catchy slogan, you go ahead and do it. Pay more what for left its mark. Babcock's campaign could not distance itself from the issue, and Forrest Anderson swept to victory, upsetting the incumbent governor by a stunning 14 points. To this day, it's the last time a sitting governor was defeated in Montana. In his biography, Babcock acknowledged that his support for the sales tax cost him the election, and in his words, quote, ended my political career as such. Two years later, the state's ongoing funding woes had the sales tax issue front and center again. And after struggling through no less than three special sessions, state lawmakers decided to put the issue on the ballot for a vote of the people. Was the outcome a foregone conclusion? That part of our story tomorrow night. In Billings, Jay Cohn, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Jay. Now we look forward to Jay's piece tomorrow and a few more months free of political ads. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, Luke Perry's death, a wake-up call for many doctors who say strokes in young people are becoming more common. And later in sports, your Cats and Grizz play a couple of thrilling Monday night matchups, and Scott tells us who wins. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger, Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire, and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.